Hi, my name is Emily and I am the user services librarian here at BCSU. My job on this campus is to help you with research and with citation. Uh, today we're going to be going over in this video how to understand and use MLA citation style. So let's begin. Before we get into MLA citation style, I just want to go over three key places that you can go to get help with this issue, but also with research. Uh, the first is the library reference desk. So that is where you can usually find me uh, and I can help with research, with finding sources and with citing those sources. The research help desk is also available virtually through Teams. And then the final place that you want to go is the library website. So when you go to the library website, you will find places to go to find information and to find your resources, but also help citing those sources as well. So now let's get into MLA citation style. Before we get into the elements of an MLA citation style, I just want to briefly mention um, something about citation generators. So citation generators are the websites that you use where you can punch in a couple pieces of your source and then it'll create the citation for you. I would urge you strongly against using citation generators and the reason being that citation, citation generators often will give you the wrong citation and will um, make your life more difficult because then you have to go through and edit the citation, whereas it's much more easy to just create the citation on your own at first and then you don't have to really worry about going through and editing the citation because if you made it right the first time, then you know it's right. So three key things that you want to remember about MLA citation style. First is authors. So this is different from certain other styles. When you are listing the name of the author, you want to put the full, full last name and the full first name. So you don't want to do just an initial for the first name. So the example you see on the page here is Smith, John. So you want to have the full name of John there. You don't want to put Smith, J. Titles, you want to capitalize in sentence case. So in other styles like APA, you only capitalize the first letter, but in MLA, you want to capitalize every word that you would um, other than words like in and and. And so capitalize it in sentence case. And then the page numbers, when you are including a page number for your full citation at the end of your paper, you want to include the full page range, not just the page that you quoted from or cited from or got your information from. You want the full page range. For your in-text citations, that's going to be different, but I'll go over in-text citations in a couple minutes. So MLA follows a general format. So you can see that format here on the screen. You start with the author, title of the source, title of container, any other contributors, a version, and a number if you have it, a publisher, publication date, and location. Depending on the type of source that you are citing, you might have some of this information and you might not, but I'm going to go through a couple examples now to show you what it looks like with specific different types of sources. So this is a book. So book is probably the easiest thing that you can cite in MLA. Um, so you have author's name. So you've got Stoneman comma Richard and notice that we use the full first name. Then we have the title of the book. So Alexander the Great, Life in, A Life in Legend. And so you can see here that every letter is capitalized except for the word the and the word in. Then we have the publisher. And so you can see here, because it is a book, if this book had an edition number, we would include that, but this one doesn't. So we skip over a lot of the pieces that you can see on the side of the screen. So we don't have other contributors, a version, a number. We go straight into the publisher. So we include the publisher, then a comma, publication date, period. Um, if this is an online source and you needed to include a URL, then that is what would come at the end for location. But in this case, because it is just a physical book that you had in your hands, you don't need that. And so that is what a book should look like. Next, we have a scholarly article. So it's a bit more complicated than a book. Um, scholarly articles are a resource that you're going to definitely want to be using and incorporating into your research. So it's good to know the citation style. So we start again with the author. So we have Gesgen and then a comma, first name, and then for the middle name, you can do an initial. Then in quotation marks, we have the name of the article. Uh, so that would be the title of the source. That is the specific source that you are citing. And then title of container, Eurasian Journal of Anthropology, 
that would be the title of the container instead of the source. So that journal contains the article that you're citing. So that's why that's the container, not the source. And then for version and number, we include that here because we have it. So often you might see number referred to as issue. Um, either one is right, but in the citation, you wanna put NO dot for the number. And then we start with the volume, which is nine. Then we do publication date. So publication date would be 2008 in this case. And then for location, we have page range. And so see here, we include the full page range of the article, not just the single page that we cited from. And then at the end, we have the URL or the DOI if we have it. If not, then it's not something that we want to include if we don't have it. So example of a book chapter. So book chapter is very similar to what a journal article looks like in the citation. So you have, again, author's name. Then we have the title of the chapter that you're citing, Misinformation in Science. Then the next thing we have down, Misinformation and Mass Audiences, that is the book that that chapter is coming from. Then we have who the editors of the book are. So Barry Southwell, Emily Thorson, and Lisa Schiebel. And then we have the publisher, so University of Texas Press, date, and then location would be the page range. When you are creating a citation for a book chapter, you only want to do that if each chapter is written by an individual author. So in this case, in this book, Misinformation and Mass, Audi mass Audiences, um, each chapter in the book has different authors. Um, and so you want to create this type of citation. But if it was a different book that you were really only referencing one chapter, but the entire book was written by a single author, then you would just want to cite it as a regular book like the first citation we went over. Next, we have example website. So before we get into the citation, I just wanna say quickly, um, when you are using a website in your research, you wanna be very careful um, that this website that you selected is a trustworthy source. Uh, so you don't want to just throw any website in there. So just wanna be aware of the websites you're choosing and wanna be careful about that. So we have the author's name, the title of the source, which will be the page on the website that you're referencing. Then we have the title of container. So that is the website as a whole. Um, then we have the date. So we have the date as the version number, version slash number. Um, and then we have the location, which is the URL. And then because it is an online source, we want to also include an access date. So that's just telling that your reader when you got this information, because websites can change so rapidly that you want to make sure that you reference when you access this information. And then finally, we have an example artwork. So for the artworks, um, it follows the same format. So instead of an author, we have an artist. And then we have the title of the source, the year that it was published, and then the location. And because I found this artwork online, I'll also want to include a URL for that location too. Um, so you do skip over a lot of stuff. Uh, there isn't a title of container or other contributors, version number, um, and things like that. But uh, just follow what you have based on the MLA format. So now we get into in-text citations. So in-text citations are the ones that you include in your actual paper as you're writing it. So you have, so the citations that we just went over, those are all going to be at the end of your paper in your works cited page. And then these are gonna be in your paper as you paraphrase or quote from a source. So for MLA, um, it is different from other styles like APA where they include a year in their in-text citation. For MLA, we just include a page number. So you can see two examples here on the screen. We have the author's last name, comma, page number, and that is all you really need to include for an MLA in-text citation. If your in-text citation does have multiple authors, um, more than two, you'll want to include at all. So you can see on the screen what it'll look like if you have uh, multiple authors. So for the first one, we just have the last name and the page number for a single author. Second one, we have two last names with the word and in the middle with the page number, and then three author, three or more authors. We'll list the first author listed on the source, and then put at all, which is Latin for and others, and then the page number. 
so that way you don't take up your whole page of paper of your paper listing 20 authors when you don't need to for your bibliography uh, so the full citations that we covered earlier uh, for a single author you want to include it just smith comma john two authors you'll do the first author that you list last name first then first name and then you'll have the word and and then you just do the other name normally so first name last name and then for three or more authors same thing as with the in-text citations you'll list the first one and then you'll do at all just to show that there are more authors so that is mla citation style in a nutshell very quick and easy um, but if you do have any questions with, about MLA citation style or about any citation style, feel free to reach out to the library. You can find come and see us in person or you can email us. We have a number that you can text to get help. Uh, you can also visit our library guide on citing sources to see a lot more examples of different types of sources. You can phone us, you can go on the library website and use our library chat service, or you can meet with a librarian directly on Teams. Uh, so feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions about citing sources about, or about finding them.